안녕하세요. Hello everyone. We're here at Korean Cultural Center Australia to celebrate Lunar New Year, Solal. My name is Heather Jong and I teach cooking here at KCC. Joining me is Australia's much loved journalist, creator of ABC's One Plus One. She thrives on conversations, the beautiful Jane Hutchin. You far too generous, <laughs> Heather. Thank you so much. We're so honoured, Jane. I am the lucky one, as most of my friends know, and Heather is one of them. Korean food is one of my passions. I absolutely adore Korean food, and I'm so happy to learn about what we're going to make today, which is dokguk which is the traditional Korean rice cake soup. You pronounce that so perfectly. <laughs> it's not easy. Dokgu, yes. I've it's been a signature practicing. Dish. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I understand um, there are some special qualities of dokgu. I mean, I'm hoping that, um, is it going to make me a bit younger and more beautiful or anything like that? It makes you, uh, it, we, um, it makes you one year older. Oh, you have to okay. have this uh, <laughs> Lunar New Year to go uh, age one year. Okay. And I haven't had this doctor <laughs> since I was 21, so. Okay, well maybe I'll only have half a bowl then. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, I love dokguk. I um, We have it at least once a month. You don't have to have it just on solar days. So. Okay, so that is the main dish on Solal, but there's also another very big component, which is the spread of food, which I believe is Suchan. Did yes. I say that okay? Yes, that's right, Suchan. So yeah. that is like a banquet of food. And the third component, again, which is fascinating, is the alcohol or Dosoju. Yes, we have that during uh, Lunar New Year uh, um, once a year and um, it's uh, seju, it's so soju. Seju. Yeah. yeah. So we're very lucky to have um, a specialist from Seoul. She is actually originally Australian, but I believe she's the first non-Korean specialist in the art of traditional Korean alcohol. And she's particularly, uh, you know, specializes in making uh, fermenting rice. So we're going to hear from her in the second part of the program. And in the third part, it's got to be my favorite part, is where we all sit down, well, we sit down <laughs> and eat some beautiful food. So that is purely a joyful thing. This is all happening in the next hour, everybody. And what we want from you is that we want your questions and your comments in the comment section. And the best comments will be selected. And we have some lovely giveaways for you, which I'll tell you a little bit about in a moment. But they'll be selected and we'll announce those in about 30 or 35 minutes from now. So I think we should get underway with the dog book. Yes, yes, I'll be delighted. So the um, viewers, if they leave, leave good comments, or ask questions. Okay, um, so yeah. yeah, we want your questions um, and we do want your comments and that's all going to help you move towards hopefully winning one of the giveaways which I'll talk about yeah, in a second. I just right. wanted to get the cooking yes. going. So uh, leave great comments, I think. Right, so I'm just going to turn on uh, Jane, um, the stove, so that we get the um, broth uh, uh, rolling. Now, um, dog, dog means rice cake. Like this, this is a sliced rice cake. Can I take one? I should put my gloves on. Sure, I, I guess you with can... COVID, we definitely, yeah, yeah uh, the COVID uh, relevant gloves. <laughs> okay, so this is quite um, hard, it's yes. quite firm. What what happens with the dokguk? Yes, so um, this is dok, um, and it's quite hard now. But when it was made, it would have been really soft. Mm -hmm. So, but because it's uh, dried uh, somewhat, um, sorry, I'm just going to turn this back on. Um, it's become a little bit hard. Okay. Um, Jane, that's a great question. Um, but it's rice cake. It's called karetto. And it's uh, been sliced from one of these. Wow. Okay. So this is what you actually, you'd buy that in a, an Asian supermarket? Yes, that's right. Um, Korean supermarkets sometimes have this non-sliced, not sliced, but usually in any Asian supermarket, they'll have sliced uh, rice cake. 
So it's quite a popular ingredient, Jay. Is it available all year round? Yes. It, okay. Yes. It's, uh, we make a variety of dishes from just this rice cake. Lovely. So that is the... It, could I be correct in saying it's like a kind of rice noodle? Yes. Okay. That's a great. That's that's such a great description. Um, it is a, a noodle kind of uh, food. Okay. Uh, but that's dok. Uh, cook means dok. Cook. Cook means uh, soup, and rice cake soup. Okay. It's not just a entree soup. This is dok cook is the signature dish. It symbolizes Solal, the Lunar New Year. So, but I'm going to show you, um, Jane, how to make the broth. Okay. So I've just got some um, beef here. What kind of beef is that? This one is a chuck steak. Okay. But you can use um, gravy or any sort of, um, you know, beef that you have at home. Or how much would you reckon that weighs? This one's probably oh, I'm not really sure. It looks but about five hundred, a bit more than five hundred grams. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's a great question. So. Yeah, about five, six hundred grams, okay. and maybe a little bit more. Um, so it's quite a lean beef, um, beef. So I'm going to drop that into the cold water, Jane. Okay. And there's a saucepan here, as you can probably see, and there's probably about, I'd say, four to five litres of water That's in there. That's right. It's quite a large saucepan. Yes, you can tell that uh, you can cook. Yeah, do you do a lot of cooking at home? Uh, I, I am not the main cook in our household. My husband tends to do cooking, <laughs> but I do love cooking. I lead food tours. I write about food. I am very passionate about food. So I'm going to be trying this out when I get home. Yes. Um, you know, Korean beef broth is quite a very, it's an easy recipe. And from the broth, we actually make hundreds of different types of soup. So it's a very important uh, part of Korean cooking. So we actually have this prepared already, Jay. Okay, so just, just tell us how long should that cook for and what other ingredients might yes. go in there? Oh, thank you for mentioning that. So I boil this um, beef and then when, it, um, when it's boiling, just uh, turn it off, uh, sorry, simmer it. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can add some aromatics like garlic and onions and just keep cooking it, simmer for about an hour and a half. Okay? An hour and a half, okay. Yes. Just with the aromatics and the beef and nothing yes, else? Yes, nothing else. It's not like a other broth where there's so many other ingredients. It's quite a basic broth, okay. but quite beautiful. Um, it's a backbone of a lot of Korean soups. Right. Yeah. So, and once it's been simmering, uh, I think there's a question. Yeah. Okay, so do we use the same rice cake for tteokbokki? What's tteokbokki? Tteokbokki is a, a street food, okay. a very popular Korean food. It's a rice, chili rice cake um, dish. Okay. Yeah. And is it the so is it the same um, dok that we use for? Tteokbokki? It's the same, it's made from the same, it's rice, okay. but tteokbokki tteok is uh, thinner. I see. So this is thicker. Okay, so, so we, you'd have to buy the thinner one in the shops to make tteokbokki. That's right, okay. that's right. But if you don't have any thinner tteokbokki rice, ah. <laughs> uh, rice cake, I actually um, use this, I cut it into, you know, uh, thinner, smaller, into thinner, strips. Mm -hmm. or into slices and make tteokbokki. So, Thank you. Yeah. So with the broth, um, this one has been cooking for about an hour and a half, has that's it? That's right, that's right. Okay. And until uh, the meat sort of follows, uh, falls off the, you know, falls off quite, comes you know, apart, comes very apart easily. easily. So you know, that's what you're um, looking for. And so we have one already prepared. And this style of tokko uh, is quite a traditional one, quite a formal one. So the formal one is you don't get rid of the beef, you actually sort of tear it apart and season it slightly and, um, and then you top it, um, it um, with the rice cake soup. Would you like me to pull that apart? I'd love to, thank okay. you. Um, if it's hot, Jay. No, it's, it's yeah, perfectly... Yeah, if you can just uh, pull it warm. apart. It comes nice apart and really easily. Yes. So do you want it like this? Yes, just or just... Just uh, shred it? Just shred it. Okay. It doesn't have to be... Uh, too small, just a uh, you know, so bite size. Okay. And um, my, you know, grandparents and my uncles and aunties they used to do this a lot. 
um, during Solal. Oh, yes. that's and lovely. And the next day, uh, we took it out of the fridge and eat it as a snack as well. The so, beef. Yeah, the beef. So it's quite a bit, and Australia has such a great beef, so yeah. Heather, you grew up in Australia. Do you have fond memories of celebrating Solal as a kid? Oh, definitely. Um, that's when we'll get um, pocket money, Jane. <laughs> so, so that was the most profitable part of my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> and the pocket money, is that, does that come in a little pouch or something yes, special? Yes, that's right. That's right. I think that's one of the, pou the, one of the pouches is in a part of our uh, giveaways, I think. Yep, yep. I'm going to show you. I, I'm going to take these off in a moment and I'll show you the giveaways that we have. But the pouch is a very important part of um, receiving. Um, and I suppose the money is about, it's like you're giving somebody prosperity, is that's it? That's right, that's right. That's the symbolism. Yeah, and like, you know, generational uh, sort of gift giving. Um, but instead of gift, it's actually money. So the kids, you know, uh, love um, the Tansola. It's their most uh, favorite day of the year, I think, in my family. I, I would like that too, just to <laughs> say. <laughs> oh, you're doing a great job, Jane. Okay. Thank you. What else can yeah. I do for you? And then so just this is to, going very well. Yeah, just to, um, we're going to season it in a minute, but just to um, continue the cooking, um, we've got. Do you want me to leave the, the fat parts in yes, there? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, there there's we go. always someone who loves. We've got a question from Sasha. Do they sell the broth in Asian grocery markets? That's a great question. That is a great question. Um, they don't. They don't sell the beef broth, but you can use any simple uh, beef broth. Okay. Uh, or I'm going to go through some of the broth making that um, you can make. But you can make it really simple, water and some stock cubes. That wow. could be another one if you okay. don't have time to make beef broth. Maybe give this yes. one a go, Sasha. It looks even easy yeah. enough for someone yes, like me right. to try. So. <laughs> um, right, so, and then in the broth that we've made, we're going to just add um, the rice cakes, stock. So that's... Um, rice cakes in as much as you want. My family really like uh, rice cakes, Jane. So they like a lot of um, rice cakes in the tokuk. Um, but here, um, can you sort of guess why I have these rice cakes? That's great, if you, the viewers can see it. Do you know why the rice cakes are uh, soaking in cold water, Jane? Um. I'm guessing, oh, I think I've done something there. Yeah, that's okay. Um, I'm yep. guessing that's to soften them. Do they oh, need... Oh, that's right. <laughs> You've done this before. <laughs> because a lot of the time the rice cake dog is sold uh, in the fridge or in the freezer and it hardens. But that's okay because it will soften when you cook it. But if you want to speed up the process, you just soak it in Got cold it. water. Okay, so I think and maybe I just, can we just show everybody sure. that's the shredded beef that I did a moment ago. Sure. So that's in kind of bite-sized pieces, so that you don't get too embarrassed with something hanging out of your mouth. It's a good size. Yes, that's right. And I mean, that's just a topping. But if you don't have, you know, piece of um, beef like that, you don't have to have that as a topping. You can just the star of the show is really the rice cakes, Jane. That's the real star um, because this gives you health and longevity. Ah, uh, well, some of us need some longevity, some of us maybe not. Um, but the, <laughs> the base is bubbling away here, and we're putting the um, dock. Yes, that's right. You're pronouncing the... it beautifully. Thank you. Sorry, well, I'm getting better as I yes. go along, aren't I? <laughs> Right. Uh, so that's just going straight into the bubbling broth. So uh, yes, we and and I'll just um, give that to you, yep. Jay. So if you can help me um, season the topping, the beef uh, shredded beef. Okay. So we've got the shredded beef. Sure. So maybe I'll just move this out of the way so the viewers can see it. But can you see that um, the broth is boiling? starting to boil and there's all these impurities that's floating at the top get rid of that skim that off and then simmer this 
with garlic and uh, maybe green onions. I'm just going to put this behind you, Jane, okay. um, for another half an hour and then you get this uh, stock. Okay. Yes. Heather, mm -hmm. I thought this might be a good time to talk about some of the giveaways that sure. we're hoping to pass out to all of you who've tuned in today. And um, here they are. Look, I just wanted, we were talking a moment ago about putting money in little pouches. And these are the gorgeous Korean pouches that um, people give to each other. It's mainly usually adults to children. They put a bit of money and it's, it's like a delightful gift. Um, so we're going to be giving away some of those. And the other thing we're going to be giving away is a traditional spoon and chopstick set. So keep coming with your questions and your excellent comments. I hope you make them all nice and thumbs up because that's what we, we like. And we hope we help you uh, make Dokguk, which is quite easy. Uh, any um, novice cooks can um, make this. But just seasoning the beef, um, we need some garlic. So I've got about, Koreans just love garlic, Jay. What's not to love yeah. about garlic? <laughs> some uh, soy sauce. Okay. Uh, preferably kukkanjang, uh, which is Korean, Korean soy, soy sauce. sauce for soup. And how many spoons did you put in there? Oh, just uh, two, three t teaspoons. Okay. I just wanted to say that um, this piece of beef might not have been the same. If you want to get the exact recipe, you can go to the... Um, KCC, um, the careercultural.org.au website, and the recipe will be there. If you request it, our lovely comment managers will probably post it for you. So um, our amounts might not be exactly the same that are in the recipe, but we're just making it according to the amount that we have right yes, now. Yes, that's right. That's, that's a um, great um, uh, tip. So this is some salt, because this is not seasoned mm -hmm. yet. And Koreans just love garlic and green onions together. So we've got some green onions that go into... This is just seasoning. So you can season whichever way you like, as long as it's got salt and uh, garlic in this. Okay. And a little drop of uh, sesame oil, just uh, to drop. sesame oil. Because Koreans just love sesame oil, Jane. Heather, yeah. what's the difference between Korean soy sauce and a lot of the soy sauces that we might get on the market, which could be Chinese or, or Japanese? What, is there a specific flavoral difference? Yes, I think Korean soy sauce is darker and uh, less salty. So, Sounds and I, I mean, you can use any soy sauce, but I do prefer using Korean soy uh, to make Korean food. So it's uh, bubbling away and you just cook this uh, rice cakes until the rice cake softens. That's great, that's uh, just the topping. And we've got another uh, pot here and we'll show you another uh, type of, of dokguk, which is rice cakes and mandu. So oh. dok mandukguk, which means Korean dumplings. Um, the dumpling gives you prosperity. So a lot of Koreans during Seollal uh, make rice cakes as well as uh, uh, dumplings, mandu. This, um, these are the mandu. Heather, what's inside them? Um, kimchi. Kimchi, kimchi that's the main ingredient. How fantastic. So and they look beautiful. They almost look like little pouches of money. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, actually they do. I never thought about that, Jane. Yeah, they're beautiful. They, they, um, they do remind you um, of money pouches now that you've said it. Are we going to put this, um, will we put this in the, the cook? Yes, oh, that's a great pronunciation. <laughs> um, the rice cakes would cook a little bit longer than the dumplings, so we'll probably drop them in um, a little bit later. But Jane, if you could just uh, put some garlic uh, into the soup. Thank you into that one um to both you can okay. put both ah now we have a really good question that's come in and a big thank you to pay for asking that question it's about the vegetarian option mm. so i am presuming because koreans always have it covered that there <laughs> is a vegetarian alternative for this that's right definitely um we have more and more vegetarians now so, um, just giving you a little basket um, pay, 
um, with Korean vegetable stock. A uh, lot of the, I mean, that's very normal in a veggie stock. So that's an onion. Uh, carrots. Carrot. Uh, I've got some shiitake mushrooms. Are those it, dried or fresh or does it not dried? matter? Those are yeah. dry. It, this is optional, but really important to put some radish, Korean radish. It really makes the um, broth really sweet. Wow. The stock really sweet. Okay. So that's a, and then everything else is, um, you and know. again, you put that in water and you cook that for a few hours? Yes, that's right. Wow. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, half an hour. And Monica asks, is it possible to make dokguk from other meat? Yes. Is it not true that originally dokguk was made from something like, was it pheasant or something gamey? You've done some research or you've got a Korean friend <laughs> and that is the highest form of dokguk broth. Really? That's for the imperial courts, the kings and queens. Well, in their grounds there's a lot of pheasants um, and then um, the peasants used to make broth from chicken. Uh, but nowadays it's uh, mainly beef, I think, or um, dried anchovies. So I'll go through that uh, in a minute, but dried anchovies, uh, Jane, um, here it is. Oh, yes. may yeah. I, um, sure. I'm going to pick one up so we can show the camera, um, a dried anchovy. Voila. And a lot of, lot of my students um, sort of like, oh, dried anchovies, it's yep, smelly and pungent. how do you make broth out of these? Mm -hmm. But these make the cleanest, is that right? nicest tasting broth. And you can always make broth because you'll have dried anchovies in your freezer. I store it in the freezer. Oh, you store them in the freezer. And I'm guessing you can buy those at most Asian yes, produce stores. that's right. So you just, um, uh, if you could just, there's the head, the shape of the fish dried, but it's best to take off the head okay. and the inside before you um, put it in into stock. And a popular version, is dried anchovy stock and you finish with oysters and rice cakes. Oh, that sounds like a very That's delightful right. combination. <laughs> That's really, um, it's regional as well. This dokku can be really regional. Can so. I ask you how many um, anchovies would you put into, say, a big um, saucepan of That's stock? Right. Because you could imagine that you'd overpower the flavours yes, if you put too many. that's all right. So if you have a stock pot uh, saucepan like this uh, and you fill it two thirds of water, okay. uh, I would add about uh, 12 anchovies. Okay, but only so boil it and simmer it for maximum 15 minutes. We're talking about that's um, probably one and a half to two litres there. Yes. And 12 anchovies. So you actually do yes. need quite a few. Yes, that's yeah. right. And you can put some like uh, seaweed, yeah, so tashima. Okay. Um, if you'd like to just put in the mandu in this stock. Okay. Um, thank you. And now we're actually moving along quite well. And I've got to tell you, coming up next, we are going to um, talk to, we're going to have Julia Mellor, who's an expert in Korean alcohol and she's going to show us about alcohol production particularly the special alcohol for lunar new year and then she's going to take your questions live from seoul so that's coming up in about six minutes from now so that's really exciting because there are really not that many specialists and particularly an australian specialist in um in korean alcohol is really something that's quite special that's right. Now this is ready. So I'll ladle this. See how quick it was, Jane? Okay. So um, I'm just going to turn this off uh, because the rice cakes have softened. So we're going to um, ladle this. Tokuk is sort of the main meal in Seoul. It's not just a soup. It's not just a side dish or um, entree soup. It's actually the main component of our salad. So um, just get rid of this green onions that was part of the stock. And I've seasoned, um, while you weren't looking, <laughs> I've seasoned this <laughs> stock with soy sauce. Um, How much bit of soy, soy did you put in there? Just, just a just to, couple um, of small uh, teaspoons? About or? about tablespoon and a half. Okay. But you know, according to your taste bud, I'm going to try and show our camera what this soup looks like because the stock 
is a beautiful kind of, um, it's like a cream color and it's glistening. It's just beautiful. Oh, thank you. And then you top this, very, very important in tteokguk with green onions. That's right. And Jane, if you could pass me the um, beef, oh, the beef. seasoned beef. And you do this right at the end. Just a little bit of this seasoned beef. And I've done some egg omelette. So just a egg yolk egg omelette and white egg omelette. Okay. It's just a very chefy thing. Um, and also <laughs> a throwback from Korean Imperial Court. Uh, a lot of the times to make it pretty, uh, we top it with uh, egg omelette, the yellow oh. and the white. It, it is actually off. beautiful because the, the yellow offsets that creamy colour I was telling you about and the green is also That's absolutely, right. um, you know, just sets off the, the and colour. And the most important thing is sprinkle with black pepper. That sets it off all together. I might, it's, uh, I've got a space it's those fingers. Really? Okay. Yeah. So I don't know whether the camera can capture uh, this beautiful dakguk. Shall I? I know. Sure. I'm going to bring it yes, round the sure. front. This is, a, this is daring because we <laughs> haven't tried this before. But I thought, there you go. Does that help? That's beautiful, great. isn't oh. it? It's, it's, it's the, the colours are so harmonious and it just really makes you want to gobble it down, although I know it's very, oh, very hot. That's great, <laughs> great. So that's just the docker for you. Do you know, I love the simplicity of it as well, Heather. That's right. In so many, you know, celebrations and banquets and events, there's always this expectation that the food has got to be voluptuous and expensive right. and difficult to cook. And I love the simplicity of this. Well, Jane, that's so right. But you know, like, um, you know, ancient times, long time ago, rice was quite an expensive uh, product. So to make uh, rice cakes was a treat for a lot of uh, Koreans and people worldwide. So I've got um, rice cakes and mandu, mm -hmm. the kimchi mandu. I'm yeah. going to bring that around the front sure. and show that to our I food. might just do the same thing. Yeah, so that's black so, pepper. And then if you could just uh, um, pass me the beef, Jane, that's okay. So just top with the beef. And just to, because Koreans are very visual as well as uh, good like we love our food but we love our food to look beautiful so just a little I love visual that. thing and i'm going to oh, thank you take this around here so these are the mandu the kimchi dumplings <laughs> and the tokguk beautiful and and again as i said just so so simple <laughs> Thank you, Jane. Thank you, That's, Heather. Uh, um, great that you didn't uh, burn your fingers. <laughs> now we have another question. This one is from Ellen, and she says, can you use other meat bones for the broth like chicken? Now I noticed you didn't use bones for this broth. Yes, but actually uh, meat broth, uh, meat bone broth, uh, bone broth is one of the most popular broth for tteokgu. Okay. So if you have good quality bone broth, so that's another broth that you can add uh, rice cakes to as w and, and chicken bone broth as well. Um, and also you can use uh, beef that's been sliced okay. and you just saute it. Don't brown it completely, but just saute it and then add water and then make stock so that it's quicker. So the stock only takes, you know, 15 minutes to cook if you're in a hurry. And if it was with bones, how long would you cook that? Oh, bones would be hours. Hours. But they're okay. loaded for health a reasons. Few hours? Yes, yes. Okay. I, I love that, you know, I've always been taught that making stock is, there's a bit of a knack to it. And somehow you seem to be saying that, you know, so long as something is cooked for a long time, you have the proportions right, you've got to a pretty good broth. That's right, and, and your heart. So my heart and <laughs> my love is in there. <laughs> Can't wait to try it. 
Uh, we have another question uh, James has asked, is it true that you become a year older once you have Tokuk on Salal? Well, we did talk yes. about that, James, and, and it, well, it's true. I'm I afraid. haven't had one since <laughs> 21, <laughs> and James having half a, half a bowl. <laughs> yes, I'm just going to have half a bowl. Um, you know, uh, we've got to think really of all the properties of Dokguk going into us as opposed to an extra year. Just just think of a year's wisdom instead of um, a year on your passport, maybe. That's right. <laughs> but if you, if you don't want to age one more year, um, maybe if you want to take baby steps, there's different types of rice cakes. Uh, this little, um, what, what shape is that? Like a, it's a peanut. Yeah, peanut shape. Uh, these are called chorengi tok, and this is quite a popular oh, rice cakes as well. It's quite a refined uh, tok A lot of uh, you know fancy restaurants would uh, use this for their tok making. Is this modern or is this traditional? Very traditional. Really, all even in the shape. Is, yes, all of this is quite uh, traditional. So this has been a traditional um, dish. Okay, very lovely indeed. Okay. Well, we're getting so, pretty close to the time when we're going to cross to there's Seoul. There's another question. We do have <laughs> another question. This is from Katrina. Thank you, Katrina. When would you eat Tokuk on Salal, breakfast, lunch or dinner? That's an excellent question. Yes, um, traditionally we'll have it for breakfast after our ancestral rites. Uh, but nowadays everyone's very busy, so a lot of the times it, it's used, um, it can be dinner time. Okay. So, but lunch, I've had Doku get lunch. So, whenever your family get together, and there have been times when I've had Doku uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Really? <laughs> I love that idea. It's like when I first went to Korea and I had kimchi for breakfast. <laughs> this was one of the biggest mental breakthroughs I ever had that you could eat something chilly and delicious like that first thing in the morning. It made me happy all day. It was better than coffee. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes. So there have been lots and lots of great questions coming our way. They have. Yeah. Indeed. And thank um, you. And I can't wait for you to try this soup. And that's gonna. We're going to taste this um, at Hanok, uh, our traditional home at okay. KCC. I can't wait for you to see it. So this is. I'm actually most excited about part three of this show, where we go to the beautiful traditional home in the Korean Cultural Center and it's um we're going to sort of sit down on the floor aren't we and we're going to eat yes. and enjoy a beautiful banquet so i think without further ado we've had a great time and please if you've got any more questions about how to cook to cook or questions about the different kinds of broths please do post your comments but time now to see the wonders of traditional korean alcohol with julia mello in seoul Happy Lunar New Year! I'm so excited to be a part of this Korean Cultural Center in Australia's special edition of Lunar New Year and Korean Traditions. My name is Julia Mello and I am a specialist in Korean traditional alcohol. So I thought today I would show all of you in Australia about how Korean alcohol plays a very important role in the traditions of Lunar New Year. So what better place to do that but at a traditional brewery. So today we are at a very special brewery in the Hongcheon area in Gangwon-do that does everything in the traditional ways uh, and the master brewer knows a lot about Korean alcohol herself. So it's a little bit chilly outside so why don't we get in and get started to learn about Lunar New Year and how Korean alcohol it plays a central role. So now we're inside the toasty, warm experience center part of this beautiful traditional brewery in Hongcheon in Gangwon-do. So before we get into the special recipes that we are going to learn today about Lunar New Year, I thought it probably would be a good time to chat about what is Korean traditional alcohol? Maybe a lot of you out there have heard of soju or bakuli, you've drunk one, maybe both, or maybe none at all. 
I wonder how many of you out there have heard the word Seoul before, or Su in Korean. The word Seoul actually means Korean traditional alcohol. Uh, actually, in Korean language, it means alcohol in general. It means beer, wine, whiskey, anything with alcohol content in it. But many people don't realize that actually this word Seoul has a really rich, long tradition in rice-based fermentation. So thousands of years ago, when the ancestors were brewing with rice, it bubbles because it makes CO2. That's the brewing process. So not knowing too much about chemistry or science, they thought, oh, wow, we've unlocked the power and magic of water and fire. So they use the character su, which means water, and pu, that means fire. So alcohol was called subur. And over time, the word subur became suur, and then suur became sur. So that's just because language changes and evolves and sometimes gets a bit lazy over time. So even in modern traditions now, we use it for all different alcohols. It actually originated from rice-based alcohol. So when we think of what is Korean traditional alcohol, you can think of it all as simply sul. So soju, cheongju, makgeolli, they're all forms of sul. But what does that mean? Uh, what is exactly these kinds of alcohol? So let's think about a little bit about how it's made. To make all of your different kinds of sul, basically it uses three different ingredients. We need, of course, rice, which is a very common uh, ingredient here in Korea for cuisine and is also the base ingredient for making alcohol. Of course, we also need water, but then we also need the magic ingredient, which is called nuruk. Now, nuruk is the heart and soul of Korean alcohol. It's what makes it different from different Asian alcohols that also use rice, and it's what gives it its expression and its uh, character and complexity. So nuruk is really a living organism all in of itself. It's a fermented, usually wheat cake, but can be made of different things. But in your nuruk, there are enzymes, there are yeast, there are bacteria, and all these wonderful things that give sul its character and its flavor and its body. But the two main ingredients in nuruk are the enzymes that can change rice into sugar. And there are yeast that can change sugar into alcohol in one simultaneous process. So simply put, if you have your rice, you can prepare the rice in one of the many techniques to making alcohol. One of the most common is to do koduba, which is actually steamed rice. So if you can steam some rice at home, uh, you simply steam it all up to a good al dente texture and then cool it down to a uh, room temperature. And then you add your water and your nuruk, and as you mix it all up, bubbles will form and it'll be very active and fermentation has started. Now, all you need is about seven days to three months, depending on your recipe, and then you've got this ready mash that needs to be filtered into drinkable alcohol. To be honest, Korean alcohol was always something done in the home. It was a home-brewed kind of technique, so it doesn't require a whole lot of equipment. And of course, filtering was also done by hand. So all you need to do is get your bucket of rice all mixed up in your mash, pour it into a filtering equipment, whether it be a sieve or a filter bag, and simply press it through. Squeeze out all of the liquid and leave the chigemi, which is called the lees that is left over. Now the alcohol that comes out is quite milky looking. It's, it's unusual to most alcohols we might be familiar with in Australia. But this is a very strong and uh, complex alcohol, which we call wonju. Wonju comes from the word original. And let me tell you, wonju is pretty punchy. Uh, wonju can be an alcohol percentage of between 12 and 21% alcohol. So if you're not careful, wonju can sneak up on you. But it's super delicious and you can drink it simply as is. But when you put wonju in the fridge, actually it will separate into two different layers because the rice sediment is a bit heavy. So the rice sediment settles to the bottom and this cloudy milky part that you get is something we call takju. Anything that has a cloudy milky appearance in Korean alcohol is called takju. So the makgeolli that I'm sure many of you have been familiar with is actually a diluted form of takju. That's more like a 6%, 7% uh, alcohol. 
But what I really want to talk to you today is about a somewhat little known alcohol, which is this golden clear alcohol that appears at the top after you've settled it in the fridge. And that is called Chongju. Now, Chongju, or sometimes also called Yakju, is this beautiful golden clear alcohol that is the royal drink, the quality drink, the drink of the kings and queens and all of the noble class, because it's considered the most refined of all the brewing cultures. So what you would do is actually scoop off this Chongju and you would give it to your honored guests or you would give it to uh, some, whoever is special that is in your house. And then you would also use it for, of course, special ceremonies. So this is why we're talking about this particular category of drink on this special Lunar New Year holiday. Because Chongju has a very special role on this day. Every Lunar New Year in the morning, there is a very special and important ritual that families prepare for their ancestors or for their family that has passed away. In the morning, early dawn, there is an offering table that has many different painstakingly delicious dishes prepared to honor the people that have passed away in their family and ancestors beyond. And during this ritual where there is bowing and there's respect and thoughts of the past, of course, there's also a toast. And this ritual, which is called chadie, is a very sacred and important part of Lunar New Year traditions every morning. But you don't just use any alcohol during the ceremony, of course you use Chongju. So even though today Chongju is not very popular in bars and restaurants and things like that, it is extremely important for the Lunar New Year traditions because it's the alcohol used during this ceremony process. But why? Why do we use Chongju and why don't we use Makgeolli or Soju or all these other things? And the reason is very important because A, it's the best quality. So when you're honoring the people that have passed in your family or the, your ancestors, of course you give them the best quality of alcohol and food that you have on hand. But there's another lovely story that I love to talk about that also thinks about the thing about aroma. In Korean alcohol, we always evaluate the quality of the alcohol on two things, on mat, which means flavor, and hyang, which means aroma. Now, of course, they're both extremely important. You can't have one without the other. But actually, sometimes hyang or aroma is just that little bit more important. And that's because we think of the aroma to be the most beautiful expression of the craft. So there's a saying that goes, why we choose Chongju or why Koreans choose Chongju for this ancestral rite is that the hyang, the aroma, is so strong and so beautiful that it reaches the heavens and can please the ancestors where they are. So all of these beautiful things around Chongju and why we use it is very much a part of this Lunar New Year tradition. However, it's not just the type of drink that we're using. Chongju is, of course, a very important uh, part of this ritual. There's also a really special recipe, which we're going to talk about a lot today. In Korean alcohol, you might hear me keep saying, mm, something, something, ju, something, something, ju. Soju, Chongju. Well, actually, that's because ju means alcohol. <laughs> so in Korean brewing and in Korean alcohol traditions, mostly recipes have a descriptor and ju at the end of it. So take soju, for example. So means to burn or burnt liquor. So distilled is soju. So that comes from the process of distilling soju. Now, today, we, there's other recipes that we do, and one of the other recipes we talk about a lot around this time is called samheju. Now, samheju uh, is broken down as sam meaning three, he meaning pig, uh, and of course, ju, which means alcohol. And you might be thinking, hmm, that's kind of weird. Uh, three pigs wine, technically, is how we would call it. But it's nothing to do with the actual pigs. It actually is tied to the lunar calendar. So Sameju is actually a three-stage alcohol that involves making rice three separate times. But this recipe means that you must do those times, those, those adding stages, on the day of the pig. So the first day of the pig, you make your first stage. On the second day of the pig, you make your second stage. And of course, on the last stage, you would make uh, on the third day of the pig. And this we call it Sameju. 
Now, this recipe you can make all year round on any days of the pig. But, of course, in Lunar New Year, everyone gets very excited about making their first Samheju of the year. So that's another recipe that we have around Lunar New Year that's very popular. But the one I want to talk about today is Tosoju. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, well, hang on a minute, we're talking about Cheongju. Why are we now talking about Soju? Not to be confused, this recipe is called Tosoju, not Tosoju. Uh, so this recipe is actually still Cheongju and is a very special recipe that is prepared for keeping someone healthy and to ward off evil spirits during this coming year. But it is not distilled and is not made of soju. This recipe is only made once during this lunar year time and it is using a base Cheongju and incorporating a lot of different what we call Hanyakche. And Hanyakche are medicinal ingredients. They are roots and spices and all these things that are supposed to do targeted good things for your body. And in this recipe is a combination of many of these different kinds of things uh, to protect you for the coming year ahead. There's a lot to know about this recipe, so we thought who better to ask uh, to tell us more about Tosoju than somebody that is a very proficient brewer uh, and our lovely host at the brewery today, uh, Brewer Tomi Dam. So why don't we get her in here so she can tell us a little bit more in detail about what is Tosoju. So thank you so much, Brewer Midam, for having us here at your beautiful brewery. Uh, and tell us all about Lunar New Year and the recipes that we can learn about. So I was just explaining that Tosoju is not Soju. Uh, I wonder if you could tell us about the recipe. Tell us what is the meaning of Tosoju. 물리칠 도, 그 다음에 귀신 소, 그러니까 악기 소가 되고요. 그 다음에 술 주자예요. 그래서 도소주 그러면 귀신을 물리치는 술이 돼. 라고 표현합니다. 도소주 만드는 방법은요. 맑은 술, 우리가 흔히 말해 약주나 청주에다가 여섯 가지 약재를 넣고 살짝 끓인 다음에 그 우러난 물을 차게 식혀서 먹는 건데요. 그 약재를 살짝 들여다보면은요. 대황, 천초, 거목, 길경, 호장근, 오두거피 이렇게 되어 있습니다. 근데 이 약재들을 일단은 삼백주머니에 넣고 술이 살짝 끓으려고 할때 집어넣어서 한 번만 약하게 살짝 끓인 다음에 불을 끄고 식힌 다음에 차게 먹으면 됩니다. 옛날에는 그 질병에 관한 예방책이나 이런 게 없었기 때문에 굉장히 그 병에 두려움이 많았어요. 그래서 이제 방법 중에 하나로 지금 아까 내가 말씀드린 약재는 굉장히 그 병에 막 질병을 예방해 주는 부분도 있고 그다음에 몸에 그 근기를 복도해 주는 약재도 있고요. 그런 약재를 정초에 먹어 줌으로써 마음으로라도 질병을 예방하고 건강하게 지내고자 하는 소원 때문에 한 거고요. 어, 살짝 술을 끓인다 그랬잖아요. 약재를 넣고 그래서 살짝 끓이면 알코올이 많이 날아가요. 그래서 알코올 도수가 거의 없는 술이 되기 때문에 질병에 가장 약한 아이, 저 약한 부분이 어린아이들이잖아요. 그래서 이, 오로지 술 중에서 유일하게 어린아이부터 먹는 술이 이 도소주입니다. 그래서 어린아이가 먹고 그 다음에 청소년이 먹고 그 다음에 청년이 먹고 그 다음에 장년이 먹고 나이 드시면 맨 마지막에 먹는 그런 술입니다. 네, 뭐 개인적인 소원이라기보다 올해 작년에 코로나19 때문에 굉장히 많, 많이 힘든 분들이 많으셨을 거예요. 가족들하고도 많이 만나보지도 못하셨고 그래서 그냥 어, 올해는 정말 도소주 먹고 질병 예방도 하고 코로나도 물리치고 올 설에는 가족끼리 다들 만나서 정겨운 시간을 좀 다들 가졌으면 하는 마음입니다. have it all the things that are about Korean traditional alcohol on this wonderful Lunar New Year holiday. I hope you all had a great time and you learned a little bit about the role of Seoul as we now know it in the traditions of Lunar New Year. 
So once again, thank you so much to the Korean Cultural Centre for this opportunity to bring the beautiful world of Seoul to the audience in Australia. And don't forget that you yourself can also try and make your own version of Tosoju uh, if you can get your hands on the ingredients in Australia. Hopefully one day you'll be able to get back over here and have a great time and experience things for yourself. But until then, I wish you a very happy, safe and healthy 2021 Year of the Ox. Happy Lunar New Year. Hello and happy Lunar New Year, everybody from Seoul, South Korea. Uh, I hope you're all having a wonderful time for this special holiday and that you're enjoying this fantastic program by the Korean Cultural Center here in Australia. I have been monitoring your comments about all the wonderful things about Korean traditional alcohol. So we've got a few minutes to answer some of your queries uh, about what it is and, and uh, some of the things that maybe you didn't quite understand. So first of all, a lot of people have been asking about what kind of rice uh, is used when we're making Korean alcohol, and it is a very specific kind. It is called chapsai, uh, and chapsai is a short grain sticky rice, which is actually coincidentally the same kind of rice to make dok or rice cake, which is what we just made in the soup portion, the dok uh, So of course you can use any kind of rice when you're brewing, but uh, we prefer to use chapsai because it has a lot of sugar, so it makes your alcohol actually quite sweet. Another question I saw was, can you get nuruk in Australia? I mean, this fantastical ingredient that is important for Korean alcohol. And the answer is yes. Can you get it widely accessible? Probably not. You might need to do a bit of digging to find where it is. But there are a lot of places, a lot of Korean grocery stores or Asian supermarkets that do stock it. So my advice to anyone that wants to get into brewing, always ask. If you don't see it on the shelves, always make sure you ask. Another question I, I saw was, what do you do with the leftovers after you have filtered? Uh, now that's a really great question because it actually has a word. The leftover leaves is called chigemi. And chigemi actually can be reused in many ways. And one of the ways is to make another drink called moju. We've learned that chu means alcohol. So moju is actually a Korean, uh, almost like an aperitif, very low alcohol, that's boiled up with all these lovely aromatics. So you take that leftover rice and you boil it with water and things like jujube and ginger and all these other different kinds of ingredients. So it's a lovely spicy drink that's uh, quite often enjoyed in the Cheonju area. Uh, so there's a lot of things that you can do. Another question was, uh, what are my personal favorite uh, drinks that I enjoy on Solal? I love all Korean alcohol, specifically it being my job, uh, but I particularly love all kinds of Cheongju. Uh, it's a time where we really all love to drink Cheongju together. And as a, as a brewer myself, uh, I like to play around with different ingredients. Sometimes I make spiced kinds of Cheongju with omija or with ginger and other kinds of things. Um, but definitely on Lunar New Year, I like to uh, enjoy that particular uh, recipe style. Uh, so there's a lot of different things about Korean alcohol that uh, we probably could still know about. Uh, it's just checking here. Ah, the, the medicinal ingredients. Now, this is a great question. Now, I have to tell you that the ingredients in Tosoju, even in English, I find difficult to pronounce. I've never heard of them before. Uh, they're very difficult to source. But that doesn't mean you can't make your own sort of DIY version of, uh, of this recipe, Tosoju. If you've ever had samgyetang, and samgyetang is that chicken dish, that chicken soup that we usually have in the summertime, uh, you can actually buy packets of the aromatic material that goes into that soup. And look here, here's one I've prepared earlier. Uh, just to give you an example, I actually ran to the store and I got uh, these kinds of packets. Now, this is great because all you need to do is then grab a bottle of Cheongju, which is readily available in Australia, and simply put this in and boil it up together. Uh, and you can make your own sort of a little bit different, but uh, your own version of, of Tosoju. Uh, another question is what's the alcohol percentage of Tosoju? Now, it's very different because actually we don't check uh, the alcohol percentage of things that we make ourselves quite often. Uh, but simply because we burn it off, uh, that heat process does burn off a lot of the ethanol. Uh, so it would likely be sort of low into the into the light sort of two, three, four, five percent alcohols. Whereas Wonju, what we uh, were talking about for brewing is much higher. 
Um, so Chongju, for example, that's usually between 12 and sort of 21%. Uh, if you're a very good brewer and you can get to those high, those high ABV points. Uh, so yes, actually an excellent question about language there. Su and ju both mean alcohol. So what is the difference? Uh, actually, ju is more used as a suffix. Uh, so it has a descriptor. So maybe some of you might know mekju, for example. Mek means barley, ju means alcohol. So ju is used to describe what kind of alcohol it is, whereas su, it just means alcohol as a whole holistic form. Uh, and actually another great question, what would I compare Chongju to? Uh, Chongju is definitely a more fermented alcohol, uh, and it is probably more similar to sake. Uh, so there's a lot of questions in here, but we've got a big day ahead of us. So I just want to say thank you very much to everyone. Uh, and if you can get down there and make your own tosoju, uh, and one day, hopefully come to Korea. Happy Lunar New Year, everyone. Hello, well we're back here at the Korean Cultural Centre in Sydney and I was watching Julia Meller giving us that incredible demonstration of how she ferments the rice and just the variety of alcohol and I know you're all fascinated because she had so many questions <laughs> thrown at her which was wonderful. Heather, tell us where we are now. We are inside KCC Hanok. Korean traditional home and it's so special to us and um, it's so I'm so honored that you can share this experience because Hanok is um, it's the pre um, it's the before um, uh, eco living uh, started this is all part of nature the it's made out of wood paper soil earth tiles like bricks um, and so, you know, it'll just disappear into nature. Oh, I love that. But, but this is like a very traditional looking Korean home. Would this have been for a, a wealthy person, a merchant or something like that? Yes, okay. I, I suspect this is uh, quite a middle class. Or maybe a scholar. There's lots of um, <laughs> lots of uh, paper and brushes everywhere. That's how they used to lots of books. Um, you can tell whether it's for the wealthy, uh, young ban they're called, uh, by the the roof. A lot of the times, mm -hmm. the roof is tiled, whereas the, for the peasants, uh, it's thatch roof from made from straw. Okay. So it won't be as nice as this. Um, but anyway, so this would, but Hanok will uh, last 500 years. So it's a very good quality um, building. And they had heated floors called Ondol um, for the very cold winters. And, uh, and the wind, would, the breeze would come in, in, in summer. And the shape of the tile, the roof, um, would determine how much um, sunlight they'll come for the very hot summers. <laughs> It's really special just to sit in here and feel, I mean, I feel transported. I don't feel I'm in Australia. Maybe it's got something to do with the beautiful food that's sitting in front of us. And this is the banquet, the sajan that I was talking yes. about before. Mm -hmm. And just to let you know, I know we are coming up to um, the top of the hour. We're going to go a few minutes late. Maybe we're going to go 10 minutes over. So bear with us, but I don't think you'll be disappointed. Yes, just bear with us. Um, we're just uh, the best part for us. And I hope you enjoyed it as well, is just the expla explanation of the food and the eating, just the best part. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, I just wanted to check, guys, um, which camera are we going? Uh, okay, okay, because I think I was looking at the wrong one. That's perfect. And we actually have um, a question from Michelle who said, how did the rice staple transform into cultural talk? I wonder about the history behind it. That's a, uh, I, I should have asked that myself. That is an excellent question. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a, a historian, so I'm not sure about this, but from my understanding is rice was a very expensive uh, staple commodity. So um, to be able to eat rice, uh, you had to be felt, uh, fairly rich. A lot of uh, Koreans had other grains to eat or other roots like uh, potatoes, sweet potatoes, 
Um, so to grind that into powder and then make it into cakes was quite an expensive, um, so it's only for special occasions. And rice cakes can be transported to other places. How fantastic. That was a great question, Michelle. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Should we talk a little bit about the dishes that we have here? So we have the mando and the beef um, toku that we made a little bit earlier That's in right. the evening. Um, we both have a beautiful bowl of that here. Um, th is that part of the banquet then? Yes, it is. Um, you have to have toku. Uh, but, I mean, traditionally, and even now, we won't be able to sit down at a sala a table uh, before chare, which is usually a lot of families in Korea and abroad would have an ancestral rights, uh, pay respect to our elders. Uh, and then we do that before we sit family and family would sit down to eat. Okay. And on a chare table, uh, we wouldn't have like anything chilly. So we won't have kimchi on a chare table. Mm. So we're, we're lucky that we can get straight into eating, <laughs> <laughs> Jane. Okay, um, Mick has asked, what banchan side dishes do you have? Okay, I guess you're sort of saying, can you get a move on, please? We're getting hungry, <laughs> and we are too. So talk us through the banchan. It's, it's so pretty. I'm going to pick yes. this up because look at that. I mean, there is such an aesthetic to Korean food. It is, it is beautiful for the eyes. It's harmonious for the eyes. And I know that it's very healthy and it's yes. delicious. It yes. sort of ticks all the yes. boxes. Tell us about yes. them. Yes, so uh, Mick, so as a side dish, we have uh, three lots of vegetables called namu. And if you can see the three colors, uh, white, green, and the brown, that all means something. Uh, it means something about health and which direction it points. I won't get into uh, where white should point, but I mean, that's very healthy and mm -hmm. it's part of this, uh, this table. And it's cold, right? Yes, and it's served at room temperature. Room temperature. And other side dishes ha we have here are all the uh, kimchi. We've got to talk yeah. about the kimchi. Um, you know I'm very passionate about kimchi mm -hmm. and I know you're very passionate yes. about kimchi <laughs> and I think you have been hiding something from us under the table, Heather. Yes, um, I just wanted to show you. This is my year supply of chili powder. I went to the farm and I picked this up last yesterday and this is five kilos and it's going to last me about one year or even less. That's how much we love chili. And because it's such an integral ingredient um, in kimchi making, Jane. And as you know, like kimchi is like, it's been part of our food culture, our culture for thousands of years. And it's not just food, it really goes to the heart of Koreans, heart of Korean cooking. I've got to ask you, you said you've just gone to the farm. So this is grown and you, you buy it in Australia? Yes, that's right. Um, Korean Australian farms and it's, uh, wow. we have really great chili powder here. So, I mean, I just love it and I keep it in the freezer um, because kimchi um, is, I mean, I even took it to my honeymoon because <laughs> <laughs> my husband loves it so much. He okay. can't live without it and he likes to have it breakfast, lunch and dinner. Okay. Um, so All right. Well, at least it was... And toast, but at least it was with his approval. I was a bit worried seeing you on your wedding day with a bag of um, chili. But, uh. <laughs> and then we have the traditional kimchi, which is made out of cabbage. And it actually enhances, because a lot of um, Korean food can be not spicy or sweet or salty. It can be quite bland as in this dokgu. That's how we, we eat very healthily. And kimchi actually, um, you know, um, sort of goes hand in hand. It entices the taste of the salty, the sweet, and uh, the chili, the spicy and sour. And the umami yes, sort of flavor. Yes, that's right. I love that. I love that it's all about a balance. And again, I keep using the word harmony, but it is so very kind of um, integrated, isn't that's it? That's right. And it's so healthy and it's so... I think we have kimchi in our DNA. It's what our <laughs> ancestors have passed down to us. And I think we really, it's something that we really own. It's been part of our culture for 
so long. I'm not going to quite eat yet because when I start to eat it gets a bit messy but I wanted to ask you about this. I think this, I can't, I don't know if you can see but this beautiful noodle which I think is a little bit counterintuitive. Um, I, I would have said this was a rice noodle but I think I know better. That's right. It's <laughs> something else isn't it? It's sweet potato noodles. I love that. And it's an ultimate um, party food, sort of a lot of Korean uh, parties or, or festive occasions have um, chapche, uh, sweet potato noodles, um, as part of uh, the party culture. And also, you have to try this uh, jane, mm -hmm. which is um, zucchini chon, hobak chon. It's uh, another Thank party um, food. And, um, and if you just notice, the chopstick, chopstick that uh, we we're using, using. Mm -hmm. is metal. So Koreans like using metal chopstick rather than uh, other types of material because I just throw back to the imperial courts. The kings and queens used to have silver chopsticks. Um, and if it was discolored, it's somebody poisoned their food. Oh, so it's that just is that tradition. What a wonderful piece of information. And of course, we're going to be giving away a traditional set with a spoon and chopsticks so that if anyone ever tries to poison your food, you'll be able to catch them out. <laughs> That's right. Should we just try the dokguk? Um, Let's do it. Birthday for everyone. Everybody's birthday. Everybody's birthday. A year older and wiser and healthier. And is and there something we say as we eat together? Uh, you just say, oh well, happy Solai. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry that, um, well, maybe it's not. If there were my children there, we'll be, I'll be giving them pocket money. Okay. <laughs> In the lovely pouches that some of you might also win shortly. Yes, and, and um, so this is the rice cake, dokguk and it's supposed to be soft. That. And we do eat it um, with the um, rice and soup with our spoons, that's a Korean tradition. That is absolutely, the stock is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> that is very, very special. So subtle mm. yet just mm. so, so joyful, just in that one mouthful. And I realize we haven't, um, talked about the prizes but I'm pretty sure um, the winners will have been posted mm -hmm. if you're looking at the comments section the winners will be posted um, in the comments section mm, that is just delicious I'm going to try the kimchi mandos I think yes that's right it's a different um, style of dumpling okay um, mandu. Um, uh I'm just hearing that um, the prize winners haven't been posted yet, but that will be coming up very shortly, so don't go away. We only have a few minutes here. Tell me about this dish, that because one, I yes. saw that being prepared. That's right. It's a slow-cooked beef uh, ribs. Uh, beef ribs. Cream. And it's also um, part of uh, royal cuisine. Oh. And Korean uh, love this beef ribs. So it's uh, soft melt, and tender, tender and melt in your mouth. Melt in your mouth, and uh, you know all the vegetables have been turned so that there's no sharp How beautiful. corners. beautiful! Oh, really? So everything in there is rounded. That's right. There's wow. no sharp corners. And Jane, you have to try this mul kimchi. I mean, kimchi has so there's hundreds of different types of kimchi. You can make kimchi from any vegetable. It's beautiful. This is and different. It's almost like in a, a a base of its own. Yes, it's um it's a cold soup, so you you have the kimchi and it's crunchy, but you have the soup, uh, like a, it, it refreshes your palate. It oh, it's a palate. palate cleanser. That's right. I love that. So, would you like to try it? I'd love yeah. to try it. What's the best way to eat that one? Um, with a spoon. Okay. And Korean custom jane is we don't lift out the bowls off oh, the okay. um, table. We use our spoon to um, to eat. Okay. Is there a reason why bowls are not lifted, or that's just, just um, part of uncouth. the food culture? That's just, that's just um, well, it's just our culture, so. And we eat our um, rice soup spoon. The kimchi soup yeah. is um, 
I'm in heaven at the yeah. moment. It is. It's very refreshing. It's super flavorful and it just gives your mouth a jolt. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. And I'll just uh, unwrap the kimchi uh, here, like a kimchi blanket. Oh. So this had been fermented uh, for about um, a week and in my kimchi fridge. So oh. if you'd like to just try the kimchi. Heather has these gorgeous pots. Um, they're about this big, they're brown and they have a lid and that's where she stores her kimchi. It's, it's a wondrous sight. She has a fridge especially for kimchi. And I've heard that the winners have been announced and your names are on the comments forum now underneath this video. Thank you all so much for participating. Your questions were, they were excellent, they weren't they? They were. Thank you. Congratulations to the winners. But you know, good luck to everyone who's listened in and thank you for everyone who's uh, watched our uh, yeah, YouTube. it's been <laughs> lots of fun and I have learned so much, whether it's about the making of the soup base, the different way to use um, the rice cakes, how they can be stored and the alcohol, you know, what <laughs> Julia has been telling us about fermentation of the rice and then this beautiful banquet. I mean, I know that there have been people working today to get this <laughs> to you, but uh, truly uh, we wish you all a very happy Lunar New Year. And I think we should do a little bit of eating. That's right. Shame that we don't have any alcohol. That's the only thing missing on this table. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have some sweet, um, is it like a sort of dessert drink? Yes, dessert or punch, shike. Shike. So it's beautiful. I've yes, tried shike cheers. before. It's a punch, isn't yes, it? Yes, that's yeah. right. Made okay. out of rice. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, we hope you've had a wonderful time with us. We've really enjoyed being with you. It's and been so much fun. It's been so fun. And thank you, Jane. Thank you so much, Heather. What should we do now? <laughs>